I know these oil-free compressors are hated by many people. I'm not a huge fan, but I have to give this one some credit. It was used for 12 years on a farm before it broke. I got it for free, fixed what was broken, and used it for a year. Then last week I found it running because it had developed a big leak. I did not know how long it was running or if it was cooked. I decided to try to fix it again. Spoiler alert, this video does not have a happy ending, but I thought maybe it could help people looking for some repair info on these compressors. Here's what originally happened to this compressor. When I got it, it would run fine, but it wouldn't build any pressure. That's because there was a big old crack in this tube here that carries the air from the pump into the tank. With a little poking around, I figured out what originally caused the thing to fail. All the vibration made this bolt fall out, which held the pump to the frame on top of the compressor, and this bracket cracked, and that allowed the whole pump motor assembly to move around enough that it broke this exhaust tube here. And I say that's what originally happened because I fixed it a year ago. I replaced this bracket, and I could not replace this bolt because the vibration caused caused it to strip out the threads here in the aluminum, so I installed this bolt instead and replaced the tube and thought I was good to go. Well, fast forward to now, and about a week ago, it started acting up again. It wouldn't build pressure. So I opened it up, and it had done the exact same thing. This bracket is broken again, and this tube is cracked. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not just going to replace these again and hope for the best. I am going to replace them, but I'm also going to add another bolt here to help hold down the pump body, hopefully keep everything from moving around, and keep this from failing again. First thing to do is remove this broken bracket. Next, I'll remove this other bolt that I added to hold the pump in place. Next, the exhaust tube here. There's the broken exhaust tube. You can see the big old crack right there. There we have the broken bracket. There's a zip tie here holding the wires in place. Cut that and I can move the motor and the pump out of the way. I'll get this new bracket in place. On these kits, you have to cut the exhaust tube to the right length, which I have now done. It turns out tightening this extra bolt I added is not very easy. That should be everything. Let's plug this in and see what happens. Fire in the hole. It looks like the extra bolt I added was a complete waste of time because it did little or nothing. The pump and motor are vibrating a lot. I think something inside is out of whack and causing a lot of vibration. Just to give you an idea how crazy loud these are, at about 5 feet away I'm measuring 100 decibels. That's hearing damage territory. I use hearing protection whenever I'm using this compressor. It's time to put a fork in this turkey because it's done for. It's been running for about 10 minutes and we have a whopping 40 PSI. While it was running, you know, I did not feel any leaks around this new exhaust tube or anything. And now that it's off, I don't hear any leaks anywhere. So it's pretty clear to me that this pump is just worn out and cannot build enough pressure. That's not a huge surprise to me. I don't know how long it was running with this broken exhaust tube, but for me it was worth it to fire up the parts cannon and spend 25 bucks on this thing. Because when I checked it before, there was plenty of air coming out of the broken exhaust tube, so I wasn't sure that the pump was actually shot. So what are my options now that this is officially a 125 pound paperweight? Well, the first one is fixing it. I think I looked up the cost for the cylinder and piston and it was like 75 bucks plus shipping, but it's not worth that to me because who knows how long the motor would last. I could also buy a complete motor and pump assembly, but I think that was around 200 bucks and it's definitely not worth spending that much on this because even working like new, it's not that great of a compressor. 
Another option is looking on Craigslist for a belt drive compressor that maybe has a bad tank or something. I could cannibalize the pump and the motor and try to put them on here and use this tank. But then you're getting into problems where who knows if the pump is good, who knows if it's a pump that you'll still be able to get parts for. Plus, while I was waiting for these replacement parts, I was looking at Craigslist in my area, and there are not that many air compressors, and a lot of them are near retail prices for used ones, so I'm not sure that's going to be very successful for me. So right now I'm leaning towards option three, which is just get a brand new compressor. Even if I do go shopping for a new one, I'll probably keep this around because maybe I could use the tank for something in the future or use this as extra capacity for the new compressor. I don't know if any of you got anything useful out of this whole video, but I just wanted to show you what I've been tinkering with in my garage over the last week. Post any comments or suggestions you have below. Hit the like button if you like this video, and thanks for watching.